If you're an independent hip hop artist, I wanna tell you what the biggest lie that I've heard in the music industry is. If you don't know me, I'm Lazy the Gifted, been doing music 13 years, produce my own music, and I teach artists how to become their own music producers. But I wanna tell you what one of the biggest lies in the music industry is. Something that I've learned and something I've realized, independent hip hop artists who end up making it, and actually it doesn't even need to always be independent, but artists who end up making it, right? Making it full-time income, making it big, all that stuff. Don't you ever notice that they have a lot of content out there? Like a lot. And you might say guys like Kendrick and J. Cole, well, they take a long time to release music, you know, so they don't have as much content and they don't go on social media as much. Well, the truth is they do have a lot of content. They've put a lot of hours and a lot of work into their craft before they made it. And they, they do have a lot of content. I mean, they have a lot of albums out there. And those are really two guys. Most artists that are really making it, they put out a lot of music. They do a lot. They put out a lot of content. They're working a lot. They're doing a lot. And so the biggest lie is quantity over quality or quality over quantity. Why is that a lie? It's a lie because you don't have to sacrifice quality for quantity or quantity for quality. The idea that you have to trade one for the other, that's the lie. You don't have to trade one for the other. You can actually have both. You can literally have a high quantity of high quality. Music, social media content, whatever. And the problem is not that we believe this lie. There's a further problem with it. If you don't have full control over the creative process and full ownership over the creative process, you're not going to be able to put out a high quantity of high quality. And I'll even give you another example, right? I'll give you basically two extremes, all right? Number one is the person who spends way too much time on music because they're buying beats, they're paying for mixing and mastering or whatever. And their mindset is I'm a perfectionist and they pride themselves on being a perfectionist. The truth is being a perfectionist is not cool. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make you better than anybody else. Okay? Because you're still broke. You still don't know what you're doing with your music. And you're just saying, well, I'm a perfectionist. And that's your reason for not making it. Because you care so much about the quality of your craft. But then you got the other extreme. Which is people who snatch beats off YouTube for free. Or whatever. And they're putting out a song or, or they're doing, maybe they're doing it themselves. Maybe they're fully producing and they're putting out tons of music and the music sucks. People look at the Russ strategy, the song a week thing. And they're like, all right, I'm going to do that. It's going to work for me. The reason Russ's strategy worked was because his music was good. Maybe in the beginning, it wasn't as good as it was in the end, but he got better, but it was good. It was, it was good music. <laughs> so if you're putting out a shitty song every week and it just stays shitty and not that good, then like putting out a song a week isn't going to help you. Putting out a song a day isn't going to help you because it's like, well, it sucks. It's not good quality. It's not, you're rapping not very good. It's not catchy. You sound weird. You're not rhyming. Your hooks aren't catchy. You're not mixing. You're not mastering properly. You're just trying to get quantity out there and it's not quality at all. So there's those two extremes, but you can have a symbiotic relationship between both of them and you can have a high quantity of high quality. So you don't have to limit yourself when it comes to the type of music you put out. Now, here's the deal. If you have believed this, oh, quality over quantity or whatever, it's not your fault because that's kind of a pretty common phrase, right? Oh, quality over quantity. It's a very common phrase. And it's, it's, it's something that a lot of people think. So it's not your fault if you believe that, but the, it's not a truth at all. Like at all. Um, so the problem though is not, again, I had just said this. The problem is not that you believe this truth. The problem is you don't have a solution to put out a high quantity of high quality until now. So 
I'll tell you at the end pretty much how you can solve this, but I'll kind of explain step by step just kind of how it goes. But it's really simple. You have to control the quality of the music. You have to control it. You have to control the, the, you got to be able to control the price of how much it costs to make the music. But you also need to be able to control the time, how long it takes to actually start and finish a song. Oops, start and finish a song. I've had artists that I've talked to where I'm like, hey, how long does it take you to make a song? And they'll say some stupid ass answer like, oh, it just takes me 20 minutes. And they're not understanding what I'm asking. I'm talking about from a blank session, blank DAW, to completely mastered and ready to put out. They don't, they don't answer that question correctly. If you have to buy a beat, maybe that cuts you some time. But if you have to spend time writing lyrics, spend time recording, that already right there should be, that's probably already maybe two hours on, on average. Maybe it takes you less to write a song. I've written songs in 30 to 45 minutes or 20. Sometimes I've written a song, a whole song in 30 minutes, but usually it takes me, because I, I, I do care about, I have, a, I have a sense of quality that I want. I, I, I spend sometimes like an hour and recording takes like an hour because I want my recordings to sound really good. So there's a sense of quality for me, but that's only two hours just for like writing recording and then mixing mastering. It's like, well, if you go to a studio to pay for mixing mastering and you're like, oh, I just spend an hour or two recording at the studio. So that that's only an hour. It's like, but how long does it take that person to mix the song? If they get the song back to you in two weeks, that's two weeks that you didn't have your song done. So that's, that's the time it takes. And same with mastering. So, so you have to be able to control those three elements, the quality of the music, the cost of how much it is to actually make the songs, and then the time it takes to make the songs. So in terms of the quality, the best way to do all of those things is you've really got two options, right? Option A is you buy beats, you pay for mixing, mastering, and you know maybe you pay for some studio time too for recording. Or you record some of it yourself, you know, or maybe you do a little bit of the mixing yourself, but you're having to depend on producers for any of the steps. That's route A. Route A is I have to depend on other people for the music production side of things in any facet. Even if you're like, well, I mix and master, but I just don't make beats. Mixing and mastering, every time I DM an artist and they say I mix and master, but I don't make beats, I almost always guarantee that it's not, they're not mixing mastering at a high quality because mixing and mastering is way harder than making beats. So if you're mixing and mastering, but not making beats, you think making beats is harder. You probably don't know how to mix and master all that good. Got to be honest. And I'm right nine out of 10 times. Um, and if you're just making beats, but you're not mixing and mastering, it's like, what are you, the type of person who starts and doesn't finish something? What do you mean? Like you don't, you don't want to finish the job. Why don't you just get the job done and finish it? So route A is depending on other people in any facet or in the entire music production process. And that's where 99% of artists go. And you're spending hundreds of dollars per song. And if you're not spending hundreds of dollars, which means you're like, oh no, 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 I save hella money. I, um, I buy beats on BeatStars for like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. And then like, I just like go to my homie's house and record and he just like mixes and masters for me for free. So it's just like, I spend like less than 50 bucks per song. Well, okay, then you're probably not putting out a high quality product. And you have to rely on your homie to meet up. Like, is your homie always available when you are? And if they are, cool, but I'm almost certain that that's not gonna be a high quality product. And if you're not putting out a high quality song, it doesn't matter how you market it or promote it because it's not a quality song. So yeah, so that's route A. Right. Route A is like, you know, I have to depend on other people for production and you're literally just shooting yourself in the foot. If you do that, that's what 99% of artists do. And 99% of artists fail and don't become full-time with their music or route B, 
which is where you fully produce your own music. You control everything. You, you make your own beats, you mix, you master, you record the vocals at home, you put everything out. That's Route B. That's like what 1% of artists do. And guess what? There's a reason that only 1% of artists end up making a full-time income with music because they're willing to do the things that 99% of people won't do. Now, when it comes to producing, you might say to yourself, well, Lee, it's going to take me a really long time to figure out how to mix and master and make beats and stuff. It's not. It's only going to take you three months if you do it the right way. It really only needs to take you three months. Not searching on YouTube for, for tutorials, not just asking a homie to shadow them. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, doing it the right way, which I'll explain how to do that at the end. If you think, well, it's going to be really expensive to start getting all the equipment. Well, the only thing you need is you need a computer. You do need a microphone set up with an audio interface and you need headphones. That's literally it. Um, I have this keyboard here, right? I have a MIDI keyboard. I almost never use it. I almost never use it. I mostly make beats on the keyboard on my computer. And I've actually literally shown clients that, that I literally do that. Um, in fact, and, and in fact, actually proof of both of those, the time and the equipment thing. Like I literally have a client named Ryan, Ryan B, who, when he started working with me, had literally no music production experience at all. Did not know how to play instruments, nothing. All he has, he has a little MIDI keyboard, but he doesn't use it either. Either He's got a MacBook, he's got a, a microphone and his headphones. And he's been in the program for, now he's been in it for, for eight weeks, but in the first six weeks, he pumped out 14 beats, fully arranged mixed beats. I can just create all this myself and put it out when I want and do all this stuff that I wanna do. and and just really tap into all of that. Like mm -hmm. there's an intrinsic value that's beyond anything. Like it's becomes worth it. Like okay. I've told my, I told my parents that it was like, I was like, dude, it's the best music investment I've ever made legitimately. Wow. Legitimately. And in the first seven weeks, he's already finished writing, recording and mixing his first self-produced song where he made the beat, recorded vocals at home, mixed and mixed. And he's about to master it in seven weeks from literally going from not knowing how to do it, buying beats on BeatStars, going to studios, paying for engineers, and, and seven weeks later, never needing to do that ever again for the rest of his career. Pretty freaking crazy. Ange, she used to take over three months to finish a song, ended up banging out two songs, fully produced, blank logic session, to mastered in two months, and then closed seven production clients in 30 days. I feel like I was kind of in a bit of a lost phase where I was trying to figure out like what to do next with my music. Now I'm doing it though in like uh, less than a month. In June, I ended up closing seven clients. My client Carlos, three beats, three weeks, already has his first song fully recorded and ready to be mixed in three weeks. Written and recorded and he made the beat in three weeks. All of these clients don't have a lot of equipment. They have their computer, they have their headphones, they have their mic, that's all they use, that's all they need and it doesn't take them that long to get results, right? So honestly, it's if you wanna get started with this stuff, and by the way, none of them know how to play instruments. Like I think Ryan maybe knows a little music theory. I don't know if Ange knows anything. Carlos doesn't know any music theory, I don't think. You don't need music theory. You don't need to know how to play an instrument. You don't need hella time and you don't need expensive equipment. So you can choose to go route A, you can choose to go route B. I would recommend for you to go route B because it's what 1% of people do. If you go the 1% route, you'll get 1% results. And then you'll never have to rely on a producer again. So how do you do that? All you have to do is click below and book a call with me. So I literally run the Rapid Fire Music Academy. I teach independent hip hop artists how to produce their own music so they never have to rely on anyone again. Guarantee you get two things at the end of three months. Number one, you're going to have at least one song fully produced, mixed, mastered, engineered by you that you're excited to release. Number two, you're going to have all the skills you need to never have to buy beats, pay for mixing, mastering, or rely on a producer ever again for the rest of your life. And if both of those things aren't fulfilled at the end of three months, I keep working with you for free until they are. So if you're interested in that, click below and book a call with me. But don't book a call unless you're ready to financially invest because the call is free, but the point of the call is to see if you're ready to actually enroll in the program. If finances are tough for you right now, just keep watching YouTube videos. If you're ready to actually invest in yourself and you're ready to take your career to that next level and become your own music producer, then click below, book a call, and 
Um, I'm not, I don't like doing a lot of hard sales and I don't like objection handling and I don't like twisting your arm. I don't want to have to convince you to produce. And also like, just don't come on the call if you're not hundred percent sure if you're ready to produce and don't come on the call if you just want to get some free game or if you just want to network with me. Don't waste my time. Don't waste your time because I'll end the call real quick and it'll just be over. All right. So thanks a lot for watching. Looking forward to speaking with you. Book that call with me below and let's get after it. All right. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.